Hi, this is your mortgage guy, Dave Steinberg. And we're here with uh, Joe Flood. Joe is a master property inspector focusing uh, largely on Long Island, but he does Long Island, uh, New York City. And uh, I know he did uh, an inspection for my kids in Westchester. So let's start with that, Joe. What's your geography? Um, pretty much all of New York. Um, like I said, I have client base go back to 20 years. So we like to try to stay around the island. I go into the boroughs. Um, we do go into the, you know, the counties upstate, but primary my, my area of um, service goes really from Montauk to Manhattan. Mm. Right. Now, I, I think I just said this, but when my kids bought a home uh, about a year ago, Joe Flood was the guy I called for an inspection because in my mind, you are the master. You, you are oh, so kind. Thank you. You're, you're a guy with high integrity. You're a guy who calls it the way you see it. And you always put the client first. And I, I really respect that. Um, it, 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 it makes a huge difference because people are not getting uh, a, a report that is prejudiced by fear of maybe I'll ne never get another referral again. Joe, I really appreciate that of you. Uh, tell us a little bit about what a home inspector does. Well, uh, you know, the key things of a home inspector is we want to basically just give you an education of what you're buying. Understand of every home has issues. Some are more serious than others. But we want, also want to put it in, in order for you to understand what you're buying. The good things, the bad things, and maybe some things that maybe you should know are price adjust. So as a home inspector, we come in, we're looking at, we're looking at all the things of one is maybe you're going to buy this house and live there forever, or maybe you're just going to buy this house as an investment. So we want to make sure that, that not only of the integrity of the home is sound, but anything that was maybe added in after the original construction, such as decks, sheds, pools, or any, anything that requires COs, um, one is they were filed because it's not so important that they were filed because two things happens when they are filed. Um, they get recorded, the town comes in, they send them their own inspectors, building inspectors, to make sure that anything was done was built to standard. Not only is it safe, it meets the town requirements. Just say if there's a pool, each town has a set of things where you have to be a certain distance from the fence or the property lines. If you do all these things, try to just stay under the radar, so your taxes don't go up, most as most people do. If they fall into criteria where you now want to file for them because now you're selling, now you're not grandfathered in, you have issues, and those things are costly, and there's you may need to file for an ordinance, you may have uh, hearings, and you could even get rejected. So it's very important to know these things, what they file, do you have CEOs, and for the most important, um, you have a safety set of peace of mind knowing that the town came in, signed off on it from a building inspector, and it's all good to think. So those are the things that I look at. Then we look at the major components, your roof, your, all, your, your boiler, your heating, your central air condition, your windows. Um, we want to make sure that those things are aesthetically pleasing, but also are not going to be at the time where they need to be replaced because those are big ticket items. A roof used to be not too long ago, three or four thousand dollars. It's tripling cost now. Mm -hmm. So those things are very costly. So we look at all the things and then we look at things that maybe you should just understand that if you move forward with it, the seller probably not going to fix these things for the inspection report. But it, it's it's an overview of these things that you should either know and maybe just be aware of that you're going to have to do or or maybe not. Um, so we give you an overview. In addition, with my services that um, we kind of signature, and this goes for our clients, we do a follow-up walkthrough. So anything that the seller promised you after our inspection report, maybe there was an electric issue, maybe there was a CO issue, or maybe there was a roof leak, uh, all the things that they promised or guaranteed to give you a price adjustment I personally come there prior to your your uh, closing and make sure all those things are done. 
And if they were not done, we give your attorney and your listing agents and all the people that are involved in your party um, a clear understanding that maybe some escrow has to be set up or uh, maybe they have to get out there and fix those things before you close. Mm. I, and that's something I really valued. I think that um, I, I'm sure there's another uh, inspector somewhere that does this, but from my perspective, that's what sets you apart, that you have the um, integrity to go back, to, to stand the scrutiny, and that my clients, when I refer you, know that everything is, when they move in, everything is disclosed and they know exactly what's going on. Yeah, and let's just talk about your, your, your personal experience. One is I've done business with you for many years now, and I always enjoy working with your, with your clients and your contacts, but it gave me great pleasure that you recommended our services to your family. So we always go beyond the call of duty, but when, when it comes to family referring us, uh, we want to make sure that everything is done and your, your, you know, your family was just perfect. And they, they were very, I love that they were involved with the inspection and doing that. But what's really important, why I added um, the follow-up inspection, because these are things that I kind of got burnt for when I bought my house. Um, the seller promised in many things, and we went to closing, and these things weren't done. So I mm -hmm. thought it'd be a good thing. Now, everybody goes there. They have, you know, they check the light switches. But it's very important, whether it be a home inspector or a contractor, these are things that peace of mind. So we have built our re relationship um, on our clients. So I don't really advertise too much. It's basically through my network group. It's people like you and resources that use their services for over the years. So in addition to when people are getting ready to buy a house, we also help people get their house ready for sale. So well, tell uh, me about that. So uh, the, it's very important when you list the house. So I always recommend that you should either have Maybe like, you know, everybody has an Uncle Joe and Uncle Fred to come look at the house, but it's important to have someone other than yourself look at it. So now the realtor come in, they will look at the house, they will give you the comps, but having someone like an inspector or, or a contractor, someone knowledgeable of the house, they should point out these things before you put the house up for sale. Because three things should really happen. One is you need to know the condition of your home before you place the house. It's not that you're maybe gonna go put a new roof on or do a new kitchen. But people are going to look in there and they're going to, that's going to be a factor to them that you're pricing this house. Did you realize that you need the roof? Because my inspector found. So if you do all these things and you do your due diligence before you list the house and people come in and after the inspection is done, say, yes, no, we had the house pre inspected. The inspector informed us that we do need a roof. We actually price adjust for that. So this price reflects that we understand we need a new roof. If you have a boiler and you're paying for services like contractors to come out to yearly check, I go right to the boiler. If I don't see that that boiler was inspected and, and serviced, that's a big red flag for inspectors. So as a seller, I'm going to tell you, have all your appliances checked prior to your open house. Mm -hmm. And if you're a buyer, make sure that the seller has these things before you close. So mm -hmm. those are all things that we look at. And as a seller, like another big red flag is your COs, that we look at things to make sure uh, they were filed and that they're safe. Because most people don't know. They think they, oh, when I bought the house, it was there. I, I have the CO. And innocently, they may think they have it. But what happens is when I look at things and other home inspector look for things, if they don't have these surf safety devices in place and measures, you know right then and there they don't have the COs because the town wouldn't issue the permit. So listing a house, very important to understand your house and educate it besides just getting the comps. Because everybody thinks a house is worth a million dollars. But when you have someone coming in and looking at it, pointing it out, it's very important to price adjust, disclose, and maybe do some little repairs to get the house good for showing. Mm. You know, I, I, I have in the past suggested that, particularly if you have somebody with a pristine home, I've often said, you know, sometimes it's worth having an inspection report sitting on the kitchen counter for everyone to see. Now, people are still probably going to have their own inspector, but putting it out there saying, this is what my inspector found. And, you know, it's just value, it's valuable. 
You know, in the old days, we used to do that with appraisals. We used to get the appraiser into the house and have the appraiser uh, put out an estimate. Uh, it's become difficult with the new code of ethics for appraisers, but I, I really am a big fan of doing that with inspections. It's a, I think it's a good tool. And like I said, the years ago, it was the appraiser re, um, pamphlet that was on the on the countertops when you walked to the properties. Mm -hmm. You know, Joe, um, Joe, you know, I bet you in, in 20 years of doing this, you've got, you must have lots of stories about things that you found in inspections. Can you share a couple of those with us? Sure. Um, I'll give you one interesting one. It was my first inspection I ever did. And mm. um, I would, it's just like when, uh, you know, New York City firemen comes a fireman. They don't put them in this in the safest neighborhoods. They put them in the neighborhoods where all the fires are, all the actions happen. So they get the experience. And then later on, they can maybe get closer to home. As a home inspector, you pray you don't get that first house. <laughs> because it's a lot. It's overwhelming because, you know, you just you just got got certified. You're all excited to do your first inspection and you want to maybe just coast through it. Well, mine wasn't that. It really was the house of power. So I walked in and we looked around those floorboards that weren't secure. Um, another big issue. I went into a playroom. This was the biggest red flag and this was the scariest thing. And this is where I turned from my home inspector into a concerning father. I went into a playroom. I did an inspection. I checked the outlets. And I, I'd asked the homeowner, where is the, the electrical panel? I like to look at it, open it, make sure there's no safety. She was actually, I, I really don't even know. So let me call my husband. The husband comes in and he picks, takes a picture frame off the electrical panel. Not only was there a cover protecting it, there were exposed wires outside of the wall where, in a play area where kids could just easily get in there. So I immediately brought in the, the both homeowners and I said, listen, I'm inspecting this. I'm going to write this up. This is a violation. This is a very, but as a concern for your children, you need to immediately get an electrician in here and put the cover on. So that was a big red issue. So I thought that was going to, that was my safetyest thing. But after that, I went to the boiler. The boiler was leaking. Uh, the foundation had cracks. Uh, it was just on and on. And then I went on to the roof and I seen the most craziest repairs ever. They had tarps over skylights because they were leaking. Now, when I was inside, I knew something was up there. But when I went on there, I seen large tarps all over the property. And I just innocently asked, you know, the, the homeowners, when was the last time you had the roof inspected? Oh, it's inspected every year. Everything's good. So one is maybe they were not forthcoming being honest. But two is they haven't, you know, there's no way that these things were looked at. So those were really concerned. So I would hope that, like I said, that I was just going to be in and out and writing up some things. This was to date my scariest and longest inspection report and my first. So I would say that was quite experience. Hmm. What's your superpower? My superpower. Okay. Uh, I would say my superpower is that when I'm, you know, when I get in there, especially most of my clients are people I know. Um, they're not just calling me because I'm the cheapest, because I'm probably not. Uh, but they're calling me because someone used me or a friend used me or a family used or one of my members um, is reaching out to a client. So my superpowers is my honesty. I go in there and I basically say, listen, I'm not one of those inspectors. They're going to come in whether and tell you whether you should buy this house. Or, or not buy this house based on what our client is. Because in my years of experience, I went in there and I would answer those questions. I probably would buy this house or I wouldn't buy it. And then the people I told them don't buy them, they bought it. And the people that I said buy it didn't buy it. So people are going to interpret what they want based on that. So I would say my superpower is my honesty. So I go in there and I enlighten them what's going on with the house and give them an education. From there, I come back and answer them. Just say if they're still unsure after they get the report and they want to do a follow-up. There's no charge. I come back. I look at some of those things, providing you know the homeowner's okay for us coming back. So I would say my superpower is honesty 
and basically just hand holding and making sure that if they're a first time bar, that any questions that they may have or concerns is pre reassured. A lot of buyers, a lot of home buyers use the inspector that's referred by the realtor. Do you think that's a good idea? Um, you know, a lot of realtors are going to get mad at me now, but I, I would say uh, on the cuff and the beginning, it's probably not best to, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't and that there's quality people. So I would say generally, uh, if you have a rapport with your realtor and you trust them and you haven't, yes, sure, it's fine. But if you are just starting with a realtor and you're unsure, um, and then you're going to bring in another unknown professional. It's probably not the best idea. I try to tell everybody that hiring an inspector, uh, hiring a mortgage professional, hiring a realty is kind of like going to the doctor, right? You just don't Google someone who's the cheapest. You don't, you always ask from a friend or family, who are they happy with? Who are they using? And that's really the best way to pick any professional service. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I would say that if I had to find a, a an inspector, I would start with asking. In our markets, where the real estate attorneys are are you know very involved in transactions, I would I would start by asking a real estate attorney, or as you said, a fam family member or friend who 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 they've used. Um, you know. Clients. One of the conversations I have with clients around property inspection is I often recommend that the client attend the inspection and have a have a notebook in their hand because you guys know more about the operations of a house than almost anybody else. You know, those are the people with the notebooks and using cameras even sometimes, you know, uh, a tape measure. Those are the people that are, are gonna get the most out of the inspection. I do a lot of inspections where the, the clients are not there. Then, you know, they may be moving from Florida and seeing a property online and they want to report. A lot of my clients have done that way. A lot of my inspections with a family member coming a representative. Uh, it's always best to be at the inspection because you're gonna get the report and it's gonna be very, you know, thorough and precise, but when you see it and then receive a report, it's secondhand and you absorb it more. So it's always best um, to be at the end. Like I said, the, the people with the notebooks and the tools and the, are always engaged and those are the best, those are my best clients. Mm. You know, and, and I think the other thing that people often don't realize is, um, especially first time home buyers, they may never have, um, operated a boiler in their lives. They, their experience with uh, air conditioning systems is turning the switch on and off or turning the dial on the uh, thermostat. But a guy like you is a real expert at, let's say, how a boiler works. And you might tell them what PM, what preventive maintenance to do or what to look out for that they're never going to get any other way. Yeah, I mean, it's just like your first opportunity. You're just getting in this house. And, you know, and part of the service that we provide is after you move in prior to the walkthrough, if you have any concerns with the report, and this is an added service that I give to my clients, before you plan to knock down a wall, before you do any improvements, maybe you're going to do some siding or add um, a deck, call me. I'll come down or I'll give you tips because there's so many things you should now incorporate that maybe the house didn't have exterior lighting, outlets, uh, receptacles, maybe um, extra water supplies. If you have a pool, uh, there's all things, kitchen, all ideas, uh, you know, to make your life simple, you know. Um, so what we do is we give them tips and tools and things that they should incorporate. And that first time when you get in that house and you're, turning on the thermostat and it doesn't work, um, it's frustrating. So we try to, you know, when as simple as a thermostat, if I see a thermostat is not a program of thermostat 
or it's very complicated, I immediately just tell them it's a simple thing. You should swap this out, put a programmable timer. If you have a one zone heating and you have multiple levels, you should add a zone. So those things we incorporate in the report, but you don't really absorb that until you actually move in. Um, so that's why we always give them the opportunity to invite us down to the house. I mean, we have clients now uh, that I keep in touch with. And I said, listen, three years ago, four years ago, thank you again for using the service. Remember us when you're getting ready to sell. As a courtesy of client, there is no charge. We'll come out. We'll give you tools and tips to get your house ready for sale. Also, to do any home improvements or repairs that we, you know, uh, reported in your thing. And the, the clients that do call us, it's a very good tool for them. And we, we enjoy doing it. Joe, I really appreciate that because that's what differentiates you from so many others. That you are, uh, I guess you and I share the commitment to a lifetime relationship with our clients. And um, I, I really respect the fact that that is so important to you. And that's something that you put front and center when you, um, when you, when you serve a client. Thank you. Well, we, you know, like I said, we know each other for many years. We both, and I'm glad you brought that out. We both have the integrity that when someone reaches out to your referral, at least, you know, this is what I believe. And I think you stand with, with that same mantra is that it's very easy to just give someone a car, but it's always best and to your best interest to give them someone maybe you use personally or your clients do, because that's a reflection of you. So, Whenever I get a referral, all your clients and your family that I have service for and all my group members, I have to go just beyond that call of duty to give them that reassurance that we're going to give you the services. And very important, when you need people for homeowners insurance, attorneys and mortgage people, we're going to give you people we used or people we're in business with. And that that makes me feel good. And, and, that, and, I'm, and it's glad that you brought that up. And I appreciate you hearing that. So um, tell us a little bit about PPNY. You're, you're the founder of the Property Professionals in New York, a networking group that is, um, well, tell us about it a little bit. Sure. Well, I, I love following your lead. Um, we are together 11 years now. Uh, it's called Property Professionals of NY, PPNY. We are a real estate-based organization with related professionals. So we have mortgage people, we have insurance people, attorneys, CPAs, financial advisors, uh, contractors. So it's pretty much anybody that is involved in the buying and selling of the transaction. We have multiple chapters. I started our first chapter in Valley Stream 11 years ago. We have uh, three chapters now, and we're opening one in Smithtown, and we're opening up one in the Midtown area. Um, mm. we are, you know, we all do business together. You're a... Uh, you know, you're a family member of PPNY, and um, it's always great when you're showing up in the events. And it's really the core of it's basically what I said. Um, you need in this in buying and selling property and generally in life, you need a posse and to have a real estate posse where you have people. When you're ready to buy, if you're if you're buying and selling as a business, you need people, you need people in your core that you can go to your mortgage people, your attorney people right away. Um, you don't want to start looking for these people when you find a house when you're in love or an investment. So having our people and having them in our group as many as years, they've come vetted and they're trusted people that I, you know, in a blink of an eye, I can give you six or seven quality people that'll help you. And really, that's really what the core is. We, and aside from our morning meetings, we meet weekly for morning meetings. We have luncheon, we have business hours. I, I mean, business happy hours. We also have luncheons. We just had our, our first annual party um, and we stay together. We're a very close net group and we all look out for each other's needs, basically our clients. Mm. Joe, um, what are you passionate about? What am I passionate about? A lot of things, but in real estate, um, I'd say my passion is I love homes. I, I love I'm excited about when people in selling or selling their property. Um, I think one is it, it's a great core investment. It's very, very, you know, for many years, I always tell people, you'll never go wrong with real estate. Uh, my brother-in-law bought, I would say, bought a property maybe about six years ago in Park Slope. 
uh, for close to a million dollars. Everybody said he was crazy. Um, now it's worth four million dollars. So uh, it's very important to to buy real estate. So my biggest passion is real estate. I get excited when people are take what I recommended in the house when they move forward with it. And that's why let me come down. I love to see what you're planning to do based on the recommendation. So my passion is, is helping people with whatever they enjoy. If they, you know, I like cars, if they're passionate about cars, um, I'm excited about it. Uh, you Boats. Know, I know you're, I know you're a boater. Yep. We have, uh, and um, besides the boating, uh, we're, we had uh, a bunch of our members uh, last year at uh, the at the club at the art club. We had fun. We had a, a nautical day. Um, so I'm excited about being with people. I have um, a lot of people that I enjoy socializing with and connecting with. Um, and really, I'm my passion is whatever you know people are excited for that they want to be involved in. I, I love a system. We've been talking with Joe Flood. Joe is. Uh one of the great property inspectors that I know. Uh, I've referred him to family members and clients over the years. And uh, Joe, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, really been a privilege to, to hear from you. Dave, thank you very much for this opportunity. And it was great chatting with you.